ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another NFL Reddit video slash discussion video. Reason I say it like that is because we're going to spend the beginning portion of the video going over all the quarterback contracts that have happened this offseason, and I'm going to give my full thoughts and opinions on them. Then after that, we'll be going into Reddit because there's a couple headlines from Twitter and other sources that I think are pretty interesting. However, don't give up hope on Dynasty mode. That is going to be coming back probably tomorrow. I think this channel is going to be running on full steam again now that we're close enough to football. And before we hop right into things, don't forget to use code Wyatt's World on G Fuel or Prize Picks, where you can save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products or match up to $100 of your first deposit. But that's all I got for plugs, and let's get into the video. All right, so like I said, starting off the video, I'm going to be going over the contracts that have been handed out to the quarterback so far this offseason, and we might as well begin with the most recent one, and that is Jordan Love. If you guys haven't heard, and no, I am not kidding, he has now been made the highest paid player in the NFL at $55 million a year annually, and also got the largest signing bonus in NFL history at $75 million. Now, the reason I said I wasn't kidding on this is because Jordan Love, I mean, he's only played one year as a starter and Green Bay has gone all in on him I mean if you're asking me that's a little bit too soon to be doing that however at the same exact time they didn't really have another option it's either pay him now or pay him 60 million next year or let him walk obviously they don't want to do either of those two things they want this guy for their future and in order to have him they're gonna have to take a little bit of a risk which they did so my official thoughts on this signing with Jordan Love is for what he's accomplished in his career so far slight overpay but I absolutely see where Green Bay is coming from I know why they did it and if I was Green Bay I would have done the same exact thing all right next contract we have is Trevor Lawrence this was from a bit earlier this offseason but in case you hadn't heard the Jags have signed him to a five-year 275 million dollar deal which comes out to 55 million dollars annually and makes Trevor Lawrence the third highest paid player in the league when it comes to guaranteed money this has caused a lot of riots and commotions especially when you look at what he's accomplished in his career and if you look at what he did last season however I'm gonna give the Jags the benefit of the doubt and I'm gonna go ahead and side with them saying I would have done the same exact thing they have seen more than enough glimpses to know that this guy isn't a talent I also hate being this guy but last year he shouldn't have been playing on that leg dude he threw just as many interceptions in the last six games as he did through the first 11 like he was fucking hurt now he played he's gonna have to put up with the shit he's gonna take for it but I'm just saying like he wasn't the same he was their number one pick three years ago man they put all the marbles into this guy they can't give up on him yet they also can't risk to pay him 60 to 65 million dollars a year so get it done now if he plays bad well I guess you guys overpaid him if he plays good you guys are gonna look like a bunch of fucking geniuses all right next contract we have is Tua's and I think he was paid just minutes before Jordan Love at least that's what it felt like anyway Tua's contract is four years for 212 million which is 167 guaranteed and 53.1 million dollars annually now I know you'll probably expect me to just rip this from left to right but I'm not actually gonna do that I understand again why the Dolphins did it and honestly I have a lot of respect for them not making him the highest paid quarterback in the league because that's them being consciously aware of hey he's not the best in the league we can't pay him like he's the best in the league so they do get props for not falling into that bullshit but it's just a big risk because as there's a big chance Tua can improve and learn from his mistakes and, and you know change his game there's also a possibility that he remains the same player we've seen for the last four years which is not bad but limited now on an unrelated note to the value of the contract I do want to talk about what Tua did after he got paid and I'm not trying to be a biased stickler on a dolphin here he was a complete douchebag I've never seen a quarterback get a contract and go out in front of his fans at training camp with a microphone saying, show me the money. And it's especially cringe when you're a big reason as to why your team is not succeeding in these large games that you continuously lose. I mean, you got to take a big contract with class, like every other quarterback who has, dude. Like, have a little bit of fucking self-awareness. Dolphin fans, if he doesn't play good this year, that video is probably going to be thrown at you guys until he's off the team. And I'm not just talking by me. I'm talking by the entire world. 
Moving on to the next contract we have, it is Jared Goff on the Lions. Earlier this offseason, they paid him to a five-year, $212 million contract, which comes out to $53 million annually. I mean, plain and simple, if you think this is an overpay, I won't even entertain your stupidity. Like, I, I don't know what you're saying. You know he can make a Super Bowl. You know he can play at an elite level in multiple different situations. And if you're anybody who's paid any attention to the Lions over the last three years, you would damn well know he is a massive key component in the rebuild that has made them one of the best teams in the league. He's an accurate passer. He's a good improviser. He's not dumb with the ball. The guy's a winner. He, he is what you want to lead your team for upcoming season. Deserves every penny. All right, next contract is again from way earlier this offseason, but it's Kirk Cousins and the Falcons. If you need a refresher on this one, Kirk signed to a four-year, $180 million deal with $90 million guaranteed, and that rings out to $45 million a year annually. So I got two opinions on this one. One, the value, $45 million a year for Kirk Cousins. I'm gonna call the police because that's highway fucking robbery. He could have probably gotten $50 million from a team if he really tried. Like, I gotta believe he could have done it. I would have probably done it, but the not-so-sweet part is the length of the contract. Now, I know it can be voided in like two years or something like that, and I know Kirk's length is a big reason as to why he signed. He wanted a big contract, a long contract, but just in grand scale, looking at the whole thing, a 35-year-old who just snapped his Achilles, like a four-year deal for $180 million, what, like that, that's pretty nuts. I love Kirk o too, but like, I think you should have just originally signed him to a two-year deal, even though that already kind of sounds like it's the plan since you have Penix. I'm just saying. I think the value on an annual basis for him, fantastic fantastic. He's a great quarterback. You're not going to find a better pocket passer than him other than maybe Justin Herbert. But damn, that's a long time for an old man who just got off of a serious injury. And the last contract we're going to go over is actually Baker Mayfield. And I had to go find it on a different website because it's so low. So earlier this year, Baker Mayfield signed a three-year, $100 million deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That includes $50 million guaranteed and an average salary of $33.3 million a year. <laughs> Like, with how he played and with how the market's going, man, this is steal of the century. This man just wanted to go to a team that wanted him. That That's literally all he wanted. He's a football guy. He is all for that city. And I guarantee you, every single fan in Tampa Bay loves Baker Mayfield to death, as they should. It ain't about the money with Baker. It's about playing in an organization that you believe in and that believes in you. Like, I, like seriously, football guy brings a tear to my eyes. All right, heading over to Reddit now. This is one of the headlines I wanted to talk about, and it's Mike Evans saying on NFL Network that he was thinking about the Chiefs or Texans prior to re-signing with the Buccaneers this offseason. Evans could have become a free agent, but he and his wife both wanted to stay in Tampa and eventually agreed on a two-year, $41 million deal. So basically, like, the world almost ended. That's what I'm getting out of this. If he would have went to the Texans, okay, whatever. Actually, the Bills would probably still have digs if he did. But if he would have went to the Chiefs, I wouldn't have watched football this season. Like, no, there would have been no point. Are you shitting me? Like, absolutely not, no. Well, I appreciate you, Mike. Appreciate your wife for really sitting down and talking about this, and uh, this is why you're the GOAT. Here's some pretty scary news about Patriots DT Christian Barrymore. He was actually diagnosed with blood clots this weekend. Now, I don't know where the blood clots were. I haven't read into the report any more than what Schefter put out here. He just says that he has blood clots. But there is no current timetable for Barrymore's return, and if anybody doesn't know how serious blood clots are, they can actually kill you. Basically, it's where blood and proteins will just clog up in your veins and not allow blood to pass and it can cause a lot of damage in certain areas and even cause your heart to stop. Like I said, it can kill you. Thankfully, it does state here he was appropriately treated, but I just want to say get well soon, man, and hope to see you back because that shit is absolutely terrifying. And ending the video, I just want to talk a little bit about Deshaun Watson just continuously being a fucking idiot. So you can find this article basically on any website. I'm on USA Today, but this weekend, Deshaun Watson in training camp was asked a question in an interview, and the question was, what does he plan to change coming into this season? The guy chose to start off his answer by saying, honestly, it's really just about blocking out all the bullshit outside. Talks about the changes he's overcame in the last two years, and then talks about how his character is being mentioned in a bad way, and how it flip-flops on him, and how he's trying to get people to like him and improve but now it's at the point where if people don't like him anymore it is what it is so in other words his response to being asked how he's preparing for this season opposed to the last two was by immediately victimizing himself in the situation that he caused over three years ago at this point just like the smallest amount of accountability would go the longest way with this guy but he won't show any we know stuff happened he has openly admitted that there were encounters with these people we've seen leaked text messages of him making sure they're okay after these encounters like own up 
up to it, man. You gotta try and make things right with a very small amount of people who are still willing to try and forgive you. Like, stop being so fucking ignorant. I feel a lot of guilt for ever supporting this guy before I even knew about any of this stuff. Just, just by how he's handling this. Like, he honestly is the worst. And that is gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen, for today's video. Like I said, I think tomorrow we're gonna be popping back into Dynasty, and for those who are missing Wyatt's World Extra, that'll be back this week too, because I'm not on vacation anymore. If you guys did like this video, you already know what to do to show support. You know I appreciate any and all help. In the meantime, though, I'm gonna hop off and get this edited so you guys can watch it on time. Have a fantastic rest of your week, and as always, I will see you in the next video.